Welcome to Running For Real, a global community with a shared love and curiosity for running. Together we reconnect with the reasons why we love to run and discover ways it helps us become better people. Whether it's the quiet moments of a morning run while the rest of the world still sleeps, or befriending the strangers next to you at the start line of a race. We are here to connect with others who see running as the common thread that weaves our lives together. Come join me, Tina Muir, as I talk with people from all walks of life, united by a love of running. Hello, my friends. Welcome to episode 283 of the Running For All podcast. Thank you for joining me today. I'm excited that you are here and excited for this episode. This was the first time I've recorded with someone, um, just a casual conversation in person for quite a while now. Um, and what a gift it was to be able to do it with a friend, um, someone whose friendship I dearly cherish. And you will hear a lot about our friendship today in this episode. But I am excited to welcome Dawn Harper Nelson onto the show. Now, Dawn has been on our Running Realized episode episode about motherhood, motherhood in the Olympics. In case you missed that episode, be sure to go check that one out. Dawn is the 2008 Olympic gold medalist in the 100 meter hurdles. She was also the two. 2012 Olympic silver medalist in the 100 meter hurdles and that tied the Olympic record of 1237 when she ran that in 2012. She also uh, was one of the women supported by and mother to go to the uh, 2020 trials and you're going to get to hear a bit about that today but mostly today we dug below the surface. We talked about being enough. We talked about the fact that Dawn is very much about mama's got to run fast, so it will be worth being away from her da- uh, daughter Harper. We talk about being competitive, about relationships. This was a really heartfelt episode that I feel like I actually needed just for my own sanity and just been a conversation I'd been wanting to have. So uh, I love that it was with Dawn and I think you're going to love her too if you do not already um, she is just a beautiful human being, and I'm so honored to welcome Dawn Harper Nelson to the Running For Real podcast. Our next partner has a product I use literally every day. I started taking Athletic Greens because I knew that I was making some, uh, maybe not mistakes, but I wasn't getting all the nutritious uh, elements that I wanted to and desired to uh, just as part of my lifestyle and just from staying away from that obsessive compulsive lifestyle of obsessing over clean eating. I knew that I wasn't able to be perfect and for my mental health, I needed to not obsess about that. Um, And I knew Athletic Greens would fill in the gaps. I knew knew Athletic Greens would be that insurance policy for my body that made me know that every morning when I wake up, I can start my day by having that scoop of Athletic Greens within a glass of water. I can shake it up, I can drink it. And then I know that no matter what happens in the rest of the day, I have taken care of myself. Uh, It means you don't have to take 50 different vitamins, minerals, supplements um, separately. It's everything you need is in one place. I consume it, as I said, first thing in the morning. It is the first thing I do upon wake up. And I find that it helps my digestion. It helps my energy. Um, It is made with 75 high quality vitamins, minerals and whole foods source, superfoods, probiotics and adaptogens, which is going to help you start your day right. That special blend supports gut health, nervous system, immune system, energy recovery, focus, aging, all the things, basically. Um, It is lifestyle friendly. Regardless of what diet you do or don't have, it is going to be good for you. Um, It is enjoyable to drink. I have it every day and I I love the taste of it at this point. And um, right now it is difficult to reclaim your health, especially with all this messaging going on about changing the way that your body looks or changing who you are. You want to arm your immune system with a convenient daily uh, nutrition solution, but without it being all this pressure of having to change who you are. This is cold and flu season, so it is especially important. So this one scoop of uh, athletic greens and a cup of water is all you need. So to make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. 
all you have to do is go to athleticgreens.com forward slash Tina. Again, that is athleticgreens.com forward slash Tina. Go take ownership of your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Dawn, from my very used, very worn, um, I don't even know what we would call this, lazy boy <laughs> chair. Welcome to the Running For Real podcast. Thank you so much. I'm excited to be in your comfortable, very used chair. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very used chair. I keep meaning to get it re-upholstered, but that is, we, we were talking before you recorded, one of those things that just, I don't take, know if they'll ever make it right, to I'm the about list. To say it is not a priority, right? <laughs> <laughs> no. But someday, maybe like 13 years from oh, now, okay. I'll find a random Will Thursday. Will it still be here though in 13 years? Like, I, I mean, I don't know. I think Steve's had that couch oh, thing for like. So he loves it. A long time. It's a part of it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, and it was my couch, you know, when you're in the middle of the night with babies. That oh, was that oh, was this, the, oh, this needs that's to stay. The yes, 13 one. years yeah. it will be here. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep. <laughs> so hopefully in a better condition than that, but we'll see. Uh, but this is actually, I think, the first in person. I, actually, there was one with Mary Kane in the summer. Other than that, this is the first in person podcast I've done. Really? So I'm excited. Okay. The first one in my home since mm-hmm. last time I brought you over here. <laughs> And uh, we recorded Running Realized episode 10 about motherhood and the Olympics. And I, do you mind if I reshare the story again? Oh, oh I tell so ahead. many people this story about how um, for Running Realized, um, our producer, John, always gives this kind of talk through about like, you know, you're going to share your story. We're going to like um, probably have you do it a few times. We're going to make you, um, you, you know, the first time you'll get warmed up and say it and then we'll go through it again. Don't be alarmed. Dawn comes in and she, so we say this and like, you see this look on her eye kind of like, okay, okay. And then just nails it. Take one. We were all just speechless at the end. It was amazing to see. Um, it, it was, what was funny about it is in my mind, I am through and through not one yes. of those overly competitive, but in my head, I was like, oh, are you asking for perfection? <laughs> well, I can give you perfection. And I'm like, come on, Dawn, it's your story. Let's go. Exactly. So, yeah, it was fun though. <laughs> yeah, no, that was, that was fun and you nailed it. And if you, you haven't listened to that, uh, to the listeners, I definitely encourage you to go back and check it out. It's one of the best ones. Um, so actually let's start with that. I mean, um, I, I would have mentioned in the, in the intro that you are Olympic champion, mm-hmm. Olympic silver medalist, <laughs> tied the world record, have all these other accolades to your name. You just said you're a competitive person. <laughs> I am also a competitive person. How do you, I struggle with this still mm-hmm. in mm-hmm. terms of like, even <clears throat> if I'm walking to a grocery store and I see someone <laughs> across the thing who's also walking to the grocery store, I like have to get to the door before them. How do you not let that overtake your life? Because I'm still struggling with that. Um, well, first of all, I will say sometimes that is fun just to have a little step with them and you're like, gotcha. You know, and they're, they're, and they're literally just picking up they like no milk idea. for the right. <laughs> um, but so I have to, it's, sometimes it is a check-in that I have to do with myself of like, mm-hmm. Dawn, you're just, listen, it's time to take your foot off the gas. You're just in everyday life. It's okay. But I have realized where there are times I'm doing something and I'm, tense. Like I'm just, I'm thinking and I'm like, okay, I need to get this done. Mm. I'm like, Dawn, literally mm. just relax. Cause what I actually had to tell myself to make me stop doing it was this can't be healthy that you're constantly in this fight mode, fight or flight, mm-hmm. you know? Cause that's in a sense, that's what it is of just trying to get things done at a certain time and you have to, mm-hmm. and if not, then there are consequences. Yep. It's like, actually you're just getting up, you're getting your daughter ready for the day. There are no, like, if you're not out the house by eight, 805, 810 is actually okay, Mm -hmm. you know? And so Mm -hmm. trying to remind myself to just be that tense all the time, that can't be healthy. So that's what I've had to do to say, ease up a little bit. (laughs) Well, and never mind the fact that with kids, it's like they can sense if you're trying to rush them out by a certain time, they're like, I feel that. And I'm going to find ways to make it fun opposite, to right? do the opposite. <laughs> yeah. Because you seem like you're stressing to get mm-hmm. me out the door. So I'm going to play a game. Yeah. So yeah. That, they don't let you do that. And you know what? Funny enough, I feel like when I'm in that type of mode, when there's something I really have to, and I can feel that I'm truly, truly tense and I'm serious and I don't mean to rub this in any parents' faces, I promise I feel like my daughter is like, I feel like she almost senses it. And she's just like, I'm going to go with the flow because like mama looks like in her <laughs> eyes, like we all could get in trouble. Like even dad could get in trouble if we don't do what we're supposed to do. I feel like she just has this thing every blue moon. She's just like, 
you're right, mom, I'm going to potty when I'm supposed to, and I'm going to put on my shoes and we're going to exit the house, you know? Mm -hmm. So yeah, I feel like she's helpful in this. That that is, that is good. And there's such good reflectors back. Actually, I had a funny moment. I haven't shared about this yet. When I was home, I was um, talking to my mum one day and I can't remember what I was doing, but I'm sure you're kind of similar to this. You're kind of used to get things going your way and being able to like, should we say negotiate <laughs> to, to get what you want. And so I was talking to my mom and Bailey comes up to me and she, uh, me and my mom, and she's like, mommy, you need to let nanny make her own choice. <laughs> and she's like, you're not listening to her. You need to let her make her own choice. And I was like, it, like immediately my reaction was no 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 I'm not, right, I'm not. Right. but then I was like you know what actually you're right Bailey I yeah. I, I do I am pushing my mum towards the decision and I do need to let her make it so that was such a funny moment of like I've obviously taught her to mm-hmm. think that way but then it that was the first time it really came back to yeah. bite me and yeah. be like hey, you know that message you wanted to, me to learn? I've learned it and I'm going to show you. Right. That's cool that, you know, she actually noticed it, you know, because it's one thing you do want to see them practicing it, the things that you've taught them and you're like, oh, wow, you're really becoming your own little person and that's okay. It's good. You got some good little morals, blah, blah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, yeah. So it was just a funny moment. Yeah. And continuing down that path, um, being a competitive person, being someone who really wants to, um, you know, achieve things and do things. You've obviously proven already that you get things done. And we're going to go on to talk about um, your uh, TV episode of Hi, I'm mm-hmm. Dawn Harper Nelson, <laughs> um, which I absolutely loved. And I've told you about this and we're going to dive into this a bit more, but um, it's um, you and I, you know, we have this friendship. We work really hard on our friendship um, even though we actually don't, you know, for how close we are together, right. we don't see each other as much as we want to, but I feel some changes happening with women um, now being able to say, like, I see you, I Mm -hmm. want to see you, I respect our friendship, but I want to value you and your work and what you're driving for and what you're trying to do. Um, I would love for you to reflect over maybe how that has changed over your running career in terms of how women see one another. And maybe it is different within the the sprints and the shorter distances Mm -hmm. realm to where it is in the distance, but... um, I'm trying to surround myself with friendships mm-hmm. just like yours, where I think the last time we saw each other was my birthday, which was August, mm-hmm. um, in person. And, um, I, but yeah, I've always felt your support there. I've always known you were there and I'm always like cheerleading for you mm-hmm. along the side. Mm-hmm. So I'd love to hear like the progression of what you've seen with right. your relationships with other women over the years. Yeah. Um, it's so funny. As soon as you started, I was like, wait, where's this question? Oh yeah. That's, I have, yes, I definitely have things <laughs> that have hit home, um, to that because I feel like you been when I was younger and the friends that I've had, and I mean, younger as in like younger twenties, not even like high school and mm-hmm. stuff, um, that there are times, you know, where you do feel like you're chasing this goal, you have things that you're doing and, and I would just say maybe it was just when I was younger and they were younger too, where you, the other person will feel like you're neglecting our friendship yes. because you're going for these goals. And you're like, when is the last time we, and when are we, and when are we? And I definitely recognize that I have lost some friendships because of that. And it's so crazy how in my mind, I meant no, like, I'm mm-hmm. like, I was, I, I kind of had my head down and I was on the grind and I wish that there were moments when they felt like they could pick up the phone and either just voice to me, like, cause it sounds, I don't want to make it seem so simple, but I feel like what they were just saying is I miss you. Yes. And I just wish they would have just picked up the phone and said, I miss you. And I'm like, I, I'm just like, oh my God, mm-hmm. do you feel neglected? I'm coming right now. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's just mm-hmm. what I felt like I would have done for them to show them that I do value you. And then we could have sat down and had the conversation so I could express maybe how I show my friendship and my love and support, because I think that sometimes it's shown differently. Mm -hmm. And the other person, if they're the one that likes to talk on the phone all the time and, you know, or certain to be in your presence, I'm not always that type of person or Mm -hmm. friendship. Mm -hmm. But when I tell you, I love when we get together, I love that we have a good time. I'm like, I miss you. I think about you often, even if I don't pick up the phone all the time. And so that's how I felt like kind of friendships were a little bit uh, when I was younger. And now, um, like you said, the other day we had conversation and I don't know if you, you I feel like you did, you caught when I said, it. I was like, I'm happy that we're fighting for our friendship. Yeah. Cause I, my yeah, mind yeah. went back to like, I don't want you to think that like, if I mm-hmm. don't text back right away, mm-hmm. like I swear I started and I put it down and it's like, it's a real thing guys where sometimes 
the person is telling the truth when they're like, I started the text and I didn't yes. hit send. Like yes. people aren't always lying. Yeah. You know, we're not trying to avoid. And that's what I think of my friendships now, where I do say, though, that I carry now with me the remembrance of I have friends that felt like they weren't valued in the way they needed. And mm-hmm. so I'm like, let me do my part. And like, even if, like I said, we haven't talked in a while, like when we finally do, I'm like, I love you so much. Mm-hmm. I am so happy for, you know, mm-hmm. I want to pour it on thick because yeah, yeah, yeah. I know I'm going to be busy in like a week or two. So Absolutely. yeah, I think things have changed and I don't know if it's now just with mature maturity and me really choosing kind of the people that are in my life because, you know, younger you're kind of, to a certain extent, you're friends with what's around you, mm-hmm. you know, or, mm-hmm. you know, and um, now being an adult married with a daughter, you know, career, you're like, I need to allow my life what's going to be supportive, what I can support um, and that type of stuff. So that's where it's it's hard, especially um, you said about, you know, starting a text and I really mm-hmm. resonate with that. And I think mm-hmm. a lot of people do. I I swear in my journal that I do in the mornings, like at least a few days a week, my one thing, I was right, one thing I could have done better. And it's always like replied to Dada's uh-huh. text because it does make you feel like a crappy friend, even though we all do it to each other. <laughs> but then like, at least for me, like I want to take the time and the mental space to actually thoughtfully reply, mm-hmm. not say like, yeah, yeah good, you, you same. know, like, because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> that means nothing. Um, mm-hmm. and I really love voice memos. I, th- I think a lot of people know I do, I do a lot of those and then I can like word vomit uh-huh. what's going on while I'm doing something. But, um, I, I think that isn't, we don't talk about that enough to where we all have those friendships where we, like you said, maybe feel neglected or maybe haven't thought through things. But at the same time, um, I don't know about you, but I feel like I carry around a lot of like guilt constantly about people who like, Oh, I really need to check in with that person. Mm -hmm. Oh, that person had a really tough week last Mm -hmm. week. I really should check in with them. But at the same time, especially for someone like you or I, we have our, tiny window of work time where you're not with the kids and when you're with the kids that thought may come through your mind but you don't want to be like hold on Uh a second you play by yourself Mm -hmm. while I go over here and pick up my phone again yeah um and it's tough so I appreciate you you sharing that um that end of it and then um have you seen a change within just the way women are able to support one another during this time, especially within this industry? Oh, absolutely. Um, I was talking uh, where I did this group. They flew us all out to, I think it was Miami. We sat down and I was there with some powerful women, soccer mm-hmm. players, WNBA players. And we really just kind of got to the nitty gritty of it. They were saying, I love, you know, where we are now and support. And they asked me the question first. And I brought up, I can pinpoint in my life and in my career when I was younger in this specific situations where I just felt like I was not supported. And I was looking like women, where are we? Mm -hmm. Let's come to, Mm -hmm. no. Okay. Well, I'll just stay in my corner and I'll cry to myself. Mm -hmm. And now, especially the way, I mean, just social media just is, if someone says something, people are jumping on like, you will not disrespect, you know, a woman, Mm -hmm. you will not, Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like you don't know her situation. What if it's different? And I just feel like now it's a poor outpouring of support because women are now like, I don't know if you have someone to support you, but I don't know you, but I'll support you. (laughs) And that's how it is. And I just feel like before it was really kind of almost like just protect yourself of like, man, that's crazy. That's happening to her. Mm. Wow. You know, Mm. and now it's like, I'm gonna jump in the fight with you. And I love where we are now. Um, I feel like strangers just walk by and was like, I'm with you girl, you know, (laughs) and they don't even know just so. Yeah. I think it's definitely been an evolving and I like where we're, we are now. Yeah. There was a, um, when I was, when I just had my first daughter, Bailey, um, there was a, when we lived in Kentucky, there was a woman on my street and I'd take Bailey out in the stroller when she was probably six to nine months old and I'd push her around for an hour and then come back. And every day this woman was sitting outside and she's like, you're my inspiration. <laughs> and we talked about this in Running Realized, you know, like saying some, you're my inspiration. <laughs> or like, you're amazing. And I'm like, thank right. you. Yes. Thank you. Like, yes. I just needed to hear that so badly mm-hmm. of like someone recognizing, yes. yes, I was doing it for myself, but also someone acknowledged the fact that I could have easily said, you know what? I can't be bothered to push mm-hmm, a stroller around mm-hmm, for an hour. Mm-hmm, but yeah. I, yeah. And you know what? To be fair, it is so much support, but oh my goodness, they're still out there. When I say them, <laughs> the ones that just, they have a view of the way things should be. Mm-hmm. And it's almost like they think they're being supportive with their, I would say it's a negative comment, yeah. but they're like, um, like when I was working out and I was pregnant with my daughter, it was 
so many people, women mm-hmm. mostly, mm-hmm. Um, that were like, you're doing a lot and you're pregnant. Should you be doing this much? And should you be? And I remember when my f- belly finally, as they say, you know, popped like it was it was there. It was no question. Mm-hmm. I couldn't fit, you know, have the coats and shirts anymore. <laughs> and I remember um, actually it was one of my old track coaches. And she said, you know, like it's in a second, it's going to be time for you to like kind of stop working out and, mm-hmm. and sit there. And I was just like, I first of all, I talk with my doctor constantly and she's like, you look good. The baby's fine. Mm-hmm. Do it as much as you want. This is what you do. Do mm-hmm. as much as you want. Mm-hmm. And I just looked at her. I was so upset and the respect was there because I've known her since I was a kid. But I remember thinking, I cannot believe we're still saying this to women. Like I just and I did. I literally I was doing drills and I just did my drill and just like went off. I was just like, but in my head, I'm like, are you serious? Mm -hmm. You think that's what I need? Cause you know, I'm really still kind of questioning me even working out. Like I know what my doctor says, just still like, okay, like I feel good. I'm hoping that this is all this bouncing, you know, if you will. And so for, for that, I'm like, that was so negative. But then you have someone else, my sister, my mom, that's like, oh my God, like you're just doing it. You're just, we're so happy. You know, we're happy that you feel good enough to get up, Mm -hmm. get off the couch. So it's amazing how you have to Find ways to steal those ones that creep in, push them aside, and then try and find the positivity, you know. But like I said, now I feel like we're just flooding each other. But it is when you said that about the lady supporting, it's so sad how that negative, that one negative comment mm-hmm. about, yeah. you know, my old coach, yeah. how it just crept in my head immediately, sure. yeah. you know. And then yeah. you have to remind yourself, no, people support you and my daughter's fine and stuff. So <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And I think, I think things are changing in that way. Mm-hmm. I remember um, when I was pregnant with Chloe, my second um and I was out in uh, California with Alicia Montano yeah. and um, just, you know, just being so inspired by the way that yes. she kind of just, she was 37 weeks pregnant and just kind of getting on with it. And, and, and that day we were at a track and I was like, you know what? I think I'm going to run this round like one lap as fast as I can. Like I hadn't done anything <laughs> like that in six months, okay. but I was like, I'm just going to do it. And like, I did it. And I, I was quite proud of my 119. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay. Um, <laughs> but um, I I did it. And, and I was like, you know what? I'm okay. Yes. Because again, I'd had mm. that like ingrained of like, yep. yeah, I can run a little bit, but I'll be very careful. Yeah, don't really and, push yourself. But like yeah. being around Alicia just gave me that extra like nudge to just try something. Mm-hmm. And then and then for the rest of my pregnancy, I was doing some like hill sprints and all <laughs> See, kinds of stuff. And I loved good. it. So yeah. Um, yeah, I think you're right. Like surrounding yourself by those people yes. who do encourage you, whether it's pregnancy or whatever, right, like whatever, for, uh, yeah. in, for women. Yep. Okay. So with that... Um, one okay, so watching hi, I'm Dawn Harper uh-huh. Nelson. One thing that struck me was it, there was a lot of messaging, which I've seen you um, across a lot of things um, about like I'm a mother, I'm or I, I'm pregnant, I'm a mother, I'm I'm doing my stuff, I'm gonna give the best that I can be. Do you ever tire of being like the motherhood advocate that mm. you are? Or that the conversation that happens around you is primarily now about like running as a mother and why that's okay, which ridiculous as that sounds, does that ever tire? (laughs) No, what I, what comes to mind is it has now created in a weird way, a fear of I, now I have to succeed because I'm that like you, like you said, you're like people looking out. How's this mother doing? Can women, I feel like now it's like when I'm doing, can women, she's the example. Can they really come back and be successful? Um, You know, and then it's like, how is she juggling it all? Let's dive down into her life and really see, is her husband really happy? Mm -hmm. Is she away from the house too much? Her daughter, well, how much time did you, oh, okay, she started daycare when she was, you know, it's just, I just Mm -hmm. feel like there are so many now questions of what all did you put aside and sacrifice for this running? And are you genuinely happy? And you know what I mean? Just all Mm -hmm. those things. So I just feel like now when I, when we were talking about doing the high, I'm Dawn Harper Nelson. I, in the back of my head, I didn't even mention it to my husband. I didn't really voice it, but I was just like, oh, now it's, it's just a totally different pressure that, I mean, yes, I'm welcoming, but oh my God, it's just now it's another different pressure. And I'm like, Mm -hmm. I wasn't, I don't want that really because I just want to run like for real. I just kind of want to have fun. But then you're like, I absolutely want to represent that because I want to say good, bad, or indifferent that do it, just do it, ladies, yeah. whatever it is. It does yeah. not have to be, you know what I mean? Like coming back from a pregnancy to do this grand thing. Mm-hmm. It could be, I want to start working out. I want to actually, I want to put some time aside for me and read a book. Like it could mm-hmm. be something that simple. Just do it. I want to yeah. show you, just do it.
Thank you to UCAM for sponsoring this episode of the Running For All podcast. I've been talking about UCAM for years as I go into thinking about racing season and I'm doing some random local races right now. I am fueled by UCAN. I have an energy bar most days of the week. That is something I use before my runs, knowing that it will sit well in my stomach. It tastes good and it can be easily consumed on the go when I'm rushing around trying to take care of my kids and my business. I also am a big fan of the energy powder, which is that timed release energy for sustained performance. Um, I take that during my races. I will be using it in my upcoming longer races. Um, and there's also edge energy, which is their uh, equivalent of a gel that you can easily just, it goes down nice and easy. It's nice and thin, not like those really thick, gloopy ones. Um, I used it in New York. It was absolutely fantastic. They have strawberry, banana and orange flavors, it's convenient, long lasting fuel with no sugar in it. Um, and also they have an energy and protein mix, which is a powder that is the ideal mix of nutrients to curb your cravings and fuel your workout recovery. I take that many days after my runs and workouts if I am rushing about. So friends, as friends of running for real, as friends of mine, you can go to ucan.co forward slash Tina to get yourself 20% off your order. You can also use code Tina UCAN to get that 20% off your order. I am using it during my training right now as I am prepping for these spring races and you should be using it too. It is a fantastic product, fantastic company to work with. Go to ucan.co and use code Tina UCAN to get yourself 20% off. <music> I think that came across very well in terms of within that episode. I think typically in stuff like that, it would be, you know, you were doing your first few races, mm -hmm. you had your, your hamstring, mm -hmm. was it hamstring, hamstring injury yes. come up and, and then you, you know, didn't do a few races and then you had a bad race right. and then like ding, 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 mm -hmm. all comes like lining yes. up and, and the fairy tale is complete. Mm -hmm. Whereas this was very real. Um, <laughs> you didn't make the Olympic team. Yep. Like it was, um, you know, it was, it was very, um, just true to what I would say a typical experience is that yes, it wasn't necessarily or everything lined up mm -hmm. at the end, but uh, so I really appreciated that, but I would love to hear now. <laughs> Not that obviously I, you know, yes, 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 yes. But yes. with that, now it's been enough time coming, well, probably six months. When was the trials? May? Right. Oh, uh, yeah. Eight months? June. So around June. So, June. yeah. About okay. So six months, mm -hmm. seven months. Usually with these negative things where something doesn't happen for us, be it we get injured, we don't make a team, we don't, something doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. um, you see something that comes out of it because of that not happening. Is there anything that's come up that you're like, wow, you know, that lined up for that way in a reason or not yet? So what was extremely helpful was right afterwards. I mean, the next day well, we flew back two days after trials mm -hmm. and the producers were back at my house. Cause they're like, now we have to talk about, you know, the other end of it. And I remember just, you know, just feeling like I, I failed. Like I, mm -hmm. because in my mind throughout my career, just straight up you get the job done there's no question there's no oh well I'm not going to make anything that's beautiful out of this like not making a team no you have to win and that's when it's beautiful and <laughs> so not making the team of course you know I'm still just in the trenches of sure. trying to just be like it's okay you, you gave it all you had um and now I'm thinking strictly was I wasting my like all the time I could have been with my daughter this is and I'm like, oh my God. And I'm like, oh my God, the world's going to see. Finally, the camera is now following me. And this is what you do with it. This is you, what you do with your quote unquote TV time to try and excel the progress of women and all this. And two producers that are males, mm. first of all, they said, our job is to always have two different outcomes. So they said when we f they first started recording, they're like, we immediately approached this with two different type of outcomes. You make the team or you don't. So we had a storyline for either. But they were like, and the one guy says, I, I don't want to say this. I, please don't take this in a bad way. He was like, it's almost better because it's so relatable, yeah. Dawn. Yeah. He's like, Dawn, you, you won the Olympics. You've done that. He said, I don't want to say it. He's like, but you've done that. You've done something that people are like, I would only dream of. Oh, my goodness. But he was like, how many people don't reach their goal? How many people yes. aren't, quote unquote, successful in that way? Yes. He's like, it just shows that life isn't over. You, he's like, you're supposed to attack your dreams. You're supposed to blah, blah, blah. And I'm looking at him like, first of all, I obviously I had not thought of it that way. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that's awesome. 
And then when he gets done, I was like, you know, I still think I failed. Yeah, he was yeah, like, yeah. he goes, I see it in your eyes. Scene. Exactly. <laughs> but it was no, but it was really beautiful to hear yeah. him just like, you don't understand what he's like. First of all, you, you were there, but you didn't see it through the outside looking in. Yeah. He was like, it was a beautiful journey and they hadn't even produced or put together anything. He's mm-hmm. like, I've been here on this journey and it's beautiful. Mm-hmm. He's like, Dawn, I'm telling you, it's going to be awesome. And then I sit down and now he has to ask the hard questions of like, okay, so talk us through, you know, not making it. And I get done and he's like, you gave us everything we needed. It's going to be an awesome ending. And all that. he's just showing that he told me, he's like, Dawn, you're going to see, um, he's like everything that people, women can get from this. Mm -hmm. And it was now it's funny how I feel better. Like, I'm not like, Oh my God, like they follow me, but there's still that obvious, like I said, I'm a huge, I'm a perfectionist Mm -hmm. and I still, that's why I was very, very helpful to hear you say that like, it was encouraging and it was inspiring. And I'm like, really, Tina? Really? You got like, you're not going to tell me not to come to your house because I didn't <laughs> win. <laughs> I mean, it's, it is sometimes it's not healthy the yeah. way that I view things. Yeah, if I'm yeah. just strictly like my husband's like, babe, that's, that's not the way the world works. Like you can't, he's like, you've been in this bubble. He's like, don't you had an extremely successful career. He's like, so I get why you look at it the way you do. But he's like, think of all the people that you lined up with that lost to you year after year after year. Mm -hmm. He's like, that's not the reality for all those women. Mm -hmm, I'm like, mm -hmm. I was like, is this what it's like? He's like, yeah, you're experiencing (laughs) the other side of it. So I just, I've also learned that you survive. And it's okay, right? Mm-hmm. Like, it's okay yeah. to be sad. It's yeah. really okay to be quite devastated because I was. And then it's like, you look at your daughter and you're like, oh, it's more to life. You know, it, yeah. hon- it honest to God is more to life. There are more beautiful things. I know I'm just, I'm just like talking and going, but no, you go that's just, you know what I mean? It yeah. is. I really had to force myself to see the other beautiful things. Did you feel that once you, when you watched it back yourself? I mean, obviously we know we're always going to nitpick at ourselves mm-hmm. for things that we do, mm-hmm. but were you able to like pull back and see it from an outsider's perspective when you watched it? Um, I probably like took like two breaths throughout the whole time. The first time I watched it, they did a um, premiere for us before. So just me and my husband and the people that worked on the film. And it was, so, I mean, I was, I, I just, I had anxiety, like driving there. I'm just mm, like, oh, yeah, cause I'm like, sure. I'm just like, how are they going to twist this ending? I like, mean, this you've is... seen it. We can see it with all kinds of TV shows, how one person could be twisted in yeah. five different directions, five different directions. Yeah. And they were like, they kept reassuring me. Like, I promise you, like, don't your story is beautiful. And I'm like, I hear what you're saying. Uh-huh, sure. Sure. And, you know, going there and sitting down and as soon as it started, the first probably like five minutes, I was like, Dawn, stop. You're thinking about the ending. Like watch the dog on film, you know, just mm. see where it goes. And I was smiling. I was laughing. And oh my goodness, tears were rolling. Like my husband, he was sitting beside me and it was so beautiful. He knew that he, we, the ending was coming and he just put his hand over and just yeah. grabbed my hand. He didn't look at me. He just, and I just grabbed like, here we go. You know, like this is a roller coaster ride. And, um, it got to, you know, the end and it was weird because I was like, it's beautiful. Like, it's weirdly beautiful that you do want to, like, I was like, I know me, but I'm like, what is she going to do next? Like, is mm-hmm. it, you know, like I said, I'm forever going to be a runner. Like, that's going, that's in my DNA. Yeah. It is just who I am. Um, but it really just made me like, it made me really just kind of think of like, there's so much to people's story. Like I know there's so much to mine, but there's so much to people's story. And I'm just, I really was an honor though, that my story could be used in any way. Mm-hmm. Cause you, I mean, you do like, if you're out there on the grind and you know, you're in public's eye, you do want people to see more of the inside of like, it doesn't always work out. And yeah. we say that, but to be honest, we that's not what it. you want to yeah. be recorded. You don't want the, mm. it doesn't always work out mm-hmm. part, mm-hmm. you know? So that was nice. I don't even know where I was going with that answer. But. No, 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 that, no, that's all really good. And actually that relates to a different thing of like, you said about the story there and that, that's, as you said, was beautifully done, very compelling. Um, and that is the real you. Mm-hmm. Yet so much of what we see is the Olympic champion, yep. the Olympic silver medalist, yes. tied world record holder. Yes. That's the, um, that's what we see. Whereas like you said, it's what's underneath that is Mm -hmm. really like, you know, makes you lovable. Like seeing those like numbers, like Mm -hmm. great, good for you, like Mm -hmm. well done, but it's the underneath, it's a story and, and 
And so, as you said, for most people, for people watching it, um, had they done the journey up to you mm-hmm. winning? Mm-hmm. I mean, yours is is pretty inspiring the way that you won and were mm-hmm. kind of like <laughs> unknown you. in that way to to you know to be the winner of the Olympics in that way. But but still, um, this was a story that would make the most impact and also, like you said, inspire other mm-hmm. mothers and mm-hmm. other women to be like, it's okay if yeah. I don't yeah. win or it's do okay. even it, in, even if it's my own version yeah. of whatever this is. Yeah. So. Starting your business I really loved or just that. whatever. Yeah. It was my sister. She told me, she was like, she was obviously real curious, like, how are they going <laughs> to? And she just said she really liked how it did show, like, you know, this person is the best. Like, she won the Olympics. She did, like, you know, because they in the earlier part, they show, like, all my races. And it's like, oh, oh, mm. oh, she's, re- mm. oh. And then eventually you see, like, this time it didn't work out. And it's like, wait, so like not working out can, that can happen to the best of us. You know, like she's like, it was really cool to see, like, you know, she's been here from, you know, obviously birth. She's older than Mm me. So my whole life. And to see that, like on the other side, she's like, yeah, if, if, if you know this thing and it didn't work out, then okay. Sometimes it won't work out. You know, it just, Mm -hmm. she said it really just kind of confirmed for her of like, it's okay. Okay. Sometimes it won't work out. You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah, no, I think that was definitely the part that people will appreciate the most. And, um, we should say, so where can people find this? What we've been talking about. Just- right. right. So I will say this. Uh, I'm so happy that. So just to let you guys know, we really have not discussed uh, this show, the Hi, I'm Dawn Harper Nelson at all. And I was telling her, I don't want to talk about it. Like, I don't even want, because we were texting a little bit. And I was like, no, I don't even want to talk about it at all. Because I want to get all of your real true emotions, like right here on your podcast. So I can be like, what? Yeah, With yeah, everybody yeah. else like, say what, girl? <laughs> um, but So what we're talking about is it's on Discovery Plus. And um and on Ma- the Magnolia Network and it's called Hi. It's a series and I'm Hi. I'm Don Harper Nelson. Yes. So um people can go. You know, if you've got cable, you can go find that, or mm-hmm. you can if you well <laughs> we right, right. Right. on it, Apple TV. It is in theory on right. Apple TV. <laughs> although even though Dawn and I live in the same yes. area, yes. my my region apparently right, right. may have it come sometime in the future. Right. I have some weird glitch going on my Apple TV yeah. that it said. It must, like you yes. said, I think I live in a hut somewhere in the right, middle of nowhere. Right. I was like, what? Apparently, so, St. Louis County is not is I not know. a region. It was that so gets, crazy. Like, gets Discovery no, Plus. I can't comprehend it. So, yep, Apple TV, you should, yeah, in well. theory, be able to find mm-hmm. it there. But if your experience is like mine, I can't help you there. Yeah, right. Oh, actually, I can. You can use your phone because that's how I use your it. phone. Yep. Yeah. Um, okay. So then that's that. Another thing that came through with that was you multiple times within it, you said a version of like, mama's got to run fast, so it'll be worth it. Um, I need to get this done. And you've already talked about being a perfectionist. Mm-hmm. You've already talked about like how it's not necessarily healthy to always see things competitively and, and really um, see winning as the only right. option. But like, how does that weigh on you? Because like, that was one thing like, to be honest, negatively that I did feel was not so much negatively on how it was done, but like, that's a lot to carry around to constantly, like every workout you do every, or at least during that time, everything was a weighing. And you even mentioned this earlier of like, was that worth the time away from Harper Mm -hmm. and like having to drop her off? Um, who was she staying with when you went down to Jacksonville? Was that family? Oh yeah, yes. okay, yeah. My staying sister. with staying with family while you go down on a, a multiple day trip when she's young. You know, v- being well aware that you know you're bombarded with messaging saying yeah. like kids need mm-hmm. you know their mom mm-hmm. during the early years like blah 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 blah. That just felt very heavy. I felt that heavy like just the pressure you put on mm-hmm. yourself. So talk through a bit about. Like that, that's a lot. Yeah, it is. What I, listening to you say that, what I liked about it was that I feel like it's the realness of so many of us moms. That's, even if you don't say it out loud, Mm -hmm. that's what you're thinking Mm -hmm. of. Like, I, you know, I'm going to work. I have to, or if I'm starting this, if I'm deciding to step away from time for my family and I'm going to start this new business or I'm going to be working out, I'm going to do this and that. It has to be exceed my expectations. That's just what we tell ourselves. Like, Mm -hmm. Because we're supposed to be at home and we're supposed to be raising these kids Mm -hmm. and they're supposed to be amazing, brilliant, perfect, in the line, straight and arrow, young individuals. And they're not always going to do that, but (laughs) that's what we tell ourselves. Mm -hmm. And I said it so much because that's almost like what gets my butt in gear. You know, it's like, that's like, remember, like you can't slip at all because this is what's on the line. This is what's on the line. And in a way, that was the only way that I knew how to do it. Like I even talked about it in the show where when I was at trials with my sister, my joke would always be before my daughter was born, 
and I was married to my husband and he lived in Illinois and I was in LA, my joke would be, well, I'm about to whoop on these girls because Mm -hmm. if they get to, you know, be with their spouses in the same house or see their boyfriends every day and I see mine every three weeks, four weeks, well, then I'm going to take it out on somebody. Mm -hmm. You know, that was like the Mm -hmm. joke slash remember what you're like a part of, remember what your sacrifices were for. And then it switched to, if I'm going to be away from my, I had to make some type of joke in a sense because it's like, it is a lot. You know, the dedication mm-hmm. that it goes into chasing your dream, especially physically, because you're not just chasing the dream when you're gone and you're like, okay, I went to practice on the track for two hours in the weight room for two hours. You're not coming home and you have all this energy. You're not just like, and I'm done now. And mm-hmm. you're like, no, now I'm actually, I need to be make sure I'm eating right. Mama's got to rest and mama's got to, so dad's going to do this for you right now. You know, it's just mm-hmm. all those mm-hmm. things. And in a sense, I take that pressure and I accept it. I love it. That's just, I, I mean, like, I do want to remember what I'm out here for. Mm-hmm. I do want to mm-hmm. remember the sacrifices. Mm-hmm. But then it's not healthy because, say, when I hurt my hamstring, it's like, you don't have time for this. This yeah, is not, yeah. there's no, there's not a window for an injury to, it, it was just, it was so much because even though they were recording all these things, there were still so many, I mean, you know, the day to day that wasn't recorded and the tears that were shed there and the nervousness of wondering, I know my husband's extremely supportive, but is this too much for us? Mm-hmm. You know, just mm-hmm. all of that. And it is, I, I say, it's just honest. It's the cross that I bear. I think whatever I'm going to, I'm going to be 70 years old, still saying, okay, I have to do, I'm, I'm going to put that pressure on myself. I'm a mama and I gotta, I think that it's just going to be the cross that I bear. And that's why I said I had to find, you know, a healthier way to view things of mm-hmm. like, don't ease up on it. Like, okay. Yeah. You can want to kill it on ease up. You're not on the track right now. Yep. You're in the grocery store. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like ease up. You're sitting down with your sister. Give her a quality hour. Like look her in the face. Talk uh-huh. to her. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Like it's okay. Thank you to Tracksmith for sponsoring this episode of the Running For Real podcast. Now, friends, as of January 8th, we are within, well within at this point, 100 days to Boston. I will be running Boston as a guide with Kyle Robidoux, who you heard me uh, have on the show uh, late last year. Um, And Boston is, for Tracksmith in particular, but for many runners, one of their favorite events of the year. Boston represents the best of the amateur spirit, inspiring runners of all levels to chase those BQ standards. And the 26.2 miles from Hopkinton to Boston offers challenges and transcendence. So you can join Tracksmith and myself to count down to one of the favorite races of the year. Tracksmith will be hosting winter Sunday morning long runs from their track house if you are in Boston and training for either that marathon or another marathon so they are hoping that you will go join them for some miles if you are around there there will be lots of cool stuff going on for those events um and tracksmith is the clothes i are the clothes i should say are the clothes that i run in day in day out i wear day in day out for my my leisure wear for my active wear for running for lounging around they there is so there are so many options and so many things that I have enjoyed with Tracksmith um, just in, in a comfort level, particularly in the winter. That is really where they shine. Um, I've mentioned many times that the Brighton base tank is one of my favorite options that I wear uh, just as a general shirt. But then I also wear it for my favorite for many of my runs. Um, and I also love the Harrier tank. That is another one. I just had a friend this morning actually text me uh, to say that she was loving her new turnover tights. They were uh, really warm and really comfortable. Um, I'm constantly getting messages like that with, from people saying how much you are enjoying Tracksmith items. And friends, you as a friend of my podcast, you will be able to get something very special and offer that is just available for Running For Real listeners. And that is that you are able to give uh, 5% of all money spent on sales is going to go to Runners for Public Lands, which is a 501c3 nonprofit environmental organization dedicated to environmental justice, advocacy and conservation. Now, if you use code TINA15, you will participate 
participate in that and you will also receive free shipping as just a little bonus that's your way to give back if you go to trexmith.com forward slash collections forward slash running dash for dash real there's also a link in the show notes you can go check out some of my favorite items including the session pants which are my comfortable sweatpants uh, that brighton base that i mentioned earlier and, and my favorite sports bra so trexmith has all the things that are going to keep you motivated they're also well into their no days off campaign which you can read more about there but they also have the most comfortable running clothes so go check those out at trexmith.com and be sure to use code tina15 to give that five percent of sales to runners for public lands yeah and I, i i definitely feel that a lot within myself there's so many moments where um you have to yeah make that decision between like okay, I know I'm going to miss out on something special with my kids. Mm-hmm. A moment that maybe in 10 years time, I'm going to be like, God, I made the right, yeah. wrong choice. Yeah. But then um, knowing that a, you're showing them, you know, as a woman to chase, especially yeah. us having girls um, to chase their dreams, to, to, you know, work towards something, but also it's hard not to, yeah. Constantly live in those, like, was that worth it moments? Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. you, um, you mentioned earlier about like when you got the hamstring injury, it's just like, I I think even in the, in the show, you said to Alonzo, like, I, I want to know that your sacrifice is worth it. Mm -hmm. Like you, you're putting extra load on their shoulders. And especially you were in the same situation. I was, um, with husband coach, Mm -hmm. that blurred line. Um, it's tough to, um, to just, you know, not be beating yourself up when things go wrong as they do, or when you do miss something that you're well aware, you know, you and I probably in 20 years are going to be saying like, Oh, that was the best Mm -hmm. time, Mm -hmm. the best time. And, and have we got the, um, the balance, right. When we get to that point to be like, I just wish I'd done a little bit more of like waiting Mm -hmm. for the career. Mm -hmm. You know what I think about, um, when I, what I will remind myself also is, is I remember when I was first deciding to do like retire and have my daughter, I remember like pretty much almost any interview I did. And it was how I was thinking. It was truly what I felt. You know, I was like, I have felt the pull, you know, for track for so long, but now I feel that pull to be someone's mom. And I'm like, Mm -hmm. I love it. Mm -hmm. You know, I truly love track and field. It will forever be a part, but I'm like, I'm going to step away for, you know, to be a mom. And when I was pregnant with my daughter, I just had this moment when I just thought when she sees these interviews, I do not want her to say like, oh, so wait, all of mom's dreams had to stop because she was going to have me. And it's like, I cry one day because I'm like, I don't want her to think that. And I'm like, I still have a desire. And I'm like, wait, I'm fine physically. I'm capable. Mm -hmm. I'm actually going to go back. And especially if I get the support from my family. And when I voiced that, um, people were like, wow, they didn't think of it that way. And I was like, yeah, think about how many conversations I've had a conversation with so many friends where they say they vividly remember their mothers being like, you know, I used to, you know, mm-hmm. but then I had you mm-hmm. and I had to, you know, my responsibilities changed yep. and I had to, you know, yep. and it's like, and you, and I feel like we know for those of us with mothers like mine, like when she says, I know she means no, she's not trying to say like, I just didn't have any more fun, you know, but you realize you did stop something that you desired to do mm-hmm. and you don't. And I was like, I don't want my daughter to feel that way. So I was like, I'm going to chase this dream. You know, I'm like, we'll see where it goes. And I am happy that now we will forever have the high. I'm Dawn Harper Nelson where she can look at that yeah. and see herself and see me and her like, no, I included you in every part of it. You yeah. know, even when I was at track practice, mama was thinking of you, yeah. you know, when I'm in the weight room, when I'm at a track meet, you know, I couldn't wait for them to call me so I could see your face, yeah. you know, yeah. so that, yeah. so she knows like, oh, I was loved when my, even though she's not in my presence, I'm loved. Like you are dear, like babe, uh-huh. you couldn't, there's not a child on this earth love more than, <laughs> you know, type of thing. So I'm happy that we have that and I can talk to her and really just voice that we can have the deep conversations about all my insecurities. So when she moves on to something, when she's older, I'm going to be like, huh, been there. Let's talk about it. You know, (laughs) I love that you're willing to have those conversations as well. Sure. And you did, I mean, in that, I I loved seeing that, how much it actually made me think that I need to do a better job of that with bringing my kids into what I'm, what I'm doing, what I do, um, with like you had Harper going with you to the Mm -hmm. track and you would like have her do little races around (laughs) and things like that, which was just really special to see. Um, and, uh, you know, 
it was just really cool to like see that intersection there. But what you said about, um, you know, plenty, knowing plenty of mums, like I see that so often now with and probably not necessarily listeners of this podcast, but other women who will say like, I don't have time to exercise or I don't oh, have, yeah. like I'll say, you just, can you just take some time for yourself? Like, I don't care if you read, if yep. you go for a walk yep. and they're like, well, I listen to a podcast while I go groceries shopping. And I'm like, that <laughs> doesn't not the, count. Yeah. Um, but like, They'll say that I just don't have the time, but then I think, you know, what message is that also sending your child? Like, like you said, that guilt that they're going to feel someday that like, wow, I put so much on you that you couldn't even take mm -hmm. 20 minutes yeah. a day That's true. to yourself to not be cleaning up the house mm -hmm. or during my nap time but yeah. to like actually just sit or do something that you enjoy for you be it coloring be it like mm -hmm. you know for you, you you're running for me my running or podcast or whatever whatever it may be mm -hmm. um yeah I just it really hurts my heart when I think about that like a they're not being the best person that they can be mm -hmm. but also that it, like you said is putting some stuff on the kid that um yeah yeah the, but yeah. So i um also talk about i think about because me and my husband we just we always we talk about all this stuff um when mm -hmm. we you, you'll you be talking to your parents and in particular i just think of his conversation with his mother my conversation with my mom and we're always like you know thinking about like are you working out like you're healthy how do you feel and they're talking to us and they're like i hope that you're taking care of yourself i hope you're taking some time you know like and they'll say stuff like you should take time for yourself and mm -hmm. you should take and you should our mothers are telling us then we're mad at them for not taking care of themselves. And he's like, wait, but am I taking care of myself? Am I not doing what I'm telling my mother? I'm frustrated mm. with my mother mm -hmm. for not taking time off of herself. Well, then that's the same thing that goes for you. Yeah. And so when I, I, now when I talk to, you know, women that are like, I just don't like, where can I find time? And I'm like, remember you were frustrated at your mom. You want her to find time in her day. It's literally the same for you. Like we are like, can't like when our parents you get high blood pressure, or you get whatever. And you're just like, oh, my, I can't believe they're saying that same frustration. Your child may feel that's like, yes. take care, like literally as important as it, as it is. You're mad at your parents for uh -huh. <laughs> put that back on your side. It's the same thing. Uh -huh. um, and I just think of I'm like the other day um, I was coming home and I was like, nope, me and Harper are just going to go to my sister's house. We were there and Alonzo, he told me, he's like, yeah, I thought you guys were going to come home. And then when you didn't, he's like, I sat down, I started reading like my Bible um, or app on his phone because he had read it for the day. He's like, and then I stopped and I was like, no, I'm going to do nothing. Because he said he read something where it said creative people need a space to not be creative. You need time to just mm -hmm. stop. And he said he did. And he was like, it was nice to just like sit there and just be on the couch and not have to, because he's a type where if I'm relaxing, like I re he wants Harper. I'm like, yeah, but Harper's a lot. She's a child. Yeah. Because he's like, her being around, I'm like, yeah, but you're being a father. Yeah. And I'm like, I'll yeah. take her upstairs and be like, no, we're not here. Like, yeah. be downstairs. Yeah, yeah. I am I am huge. And that's something I think for me, track taught me where I, I you have to prioritize your body. You have to prioritize your mind. Mm -hmm. And when I lived alone, it would be times I would really just sit on the couch and almost just try and be like, duh. Because yeah. I'm like, yeah. I need to shut it off. Yeah. And I talk to people and they're like, oh, I was so busy. I'm like, did you, did you, did, didn't relax at all today? They're like, no. And I'm like, girl, I should, I shut it down. I flick the switch down and I'm like, just try and fall into the abyss. Just <laughs> nothing. But that's so, it is hard to do with, like, it's very easy during, everyone has those moments in the day, but it's very mm -hmm. easy not to just grab a phone. Yeah. And oh, for sure. Either f like s um, scroll mm -hmm. to like, just as you might think like, well, I'm just going to like veg out for a minute, but you're still consuming information or to yeah, be like, Oh, I've got to reply to these mm -hmm. messages mm -hmm. or just to be like, Oh, I should probably, um, fold the laundry or something like yeah. to take those moments. Um, but like you said, it is so good for us to just have empty space time, even if it's just for five minutes five. to eat your lunch, like yep. actually eat your lunch, not doing something. Yeah. Um, but it can be hard. It can be hard to do. And so I think we all have to work on that during this time. And especially, you know, you and I both are that kind of very driven. Mm -hmm. One more thing to get done mm -hmm. is one more thing, like kind of people. It is hard. But um, yeah, I just that that was something that really came across in the film of like, yes, you do take care of yourself. Yes, you do prioritize yourself. But you also um, make sure that Harper is included mm -hmm. in everything that you're doing and making sure that she feels valued and, and worth 
yeah worth it yeah yeah um so then related to that with your own successes you're obviously still working on this based on what you've said but mm. how do you keep reminding yourself that you are enough that you mm. you've done these incredible things but with that pressure of having done them as we've talked about already comes with well yeah but what next mm -hmm. or like okay i was the olympic champion but i'm not now yes. so what am i doing with that energy now yeah. how do you let that go um it is hard <laughs> it is I would always be like, oh, my God, it's sadly hard, if that even makes sense, because you're like, I did it for so many years. I walked into a space and I was the Olympic champion, Don Harper Nelson. Like, that's how they introduce you. Mm -hmm. Like, it's mm -hmm. not it's not like I thought this up in my head. It's like, no, that was my my name was mm -hmm. Olympic champion, Don Harper Nelson. Yeah. You know, like you go and you're stepping on the track and once they announce your lane, that's what they say. Um, and I was telling my husband, I was like, it's. It was cool to be that chick. Like, it was really cool to be in the space. And they're like, is that the whispers? And you're like, that's me. That's me. <laughs> um, but I, um, lately I've had to, I realize, I'm like, I have other talents too that I'm like, I, I guess I do have other desires. Like I really did. I'm talking about like, shut them off. It's like, don't you entertain that another thing because mm -hmm. you're running, you know? And then you've had other people in your life that tells you, you can't care or entertain anything else because literally track will suffer. And so I yeah. really bought into it um, to the detriment of like my own beliefs. Cause I'm like, I, my belief is that's what you are. That's all you are. Um, and so I've had to really kind of take time to like read up on other things. Like I know I've always had an interest in being um, in front of the camera. I think I'm very comfortable interacting with, with other people and I would do interviews where I would get done and they were like, you, have you ever thought of being on mm. TV? And I'm like, yeah, one day, but I'm like, no, I'm like, no, I can't. Like, do you why think that was I? protecting yourself or was that you just didn't want to entertain the idea? No, I think after a while, I really bought into believing that you can't do anything but one thing at a time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so that's something else that I had to teach myself when I had my, like I, I juggled obviously track and interviews and anything that dealt with track. Like that's what I juggled, but I said anything outside of it. I've taught myself now that, Oh, you just have to find a way to um, put it, add it into your schedule, but it's not going to take away as long as you're not like, like switching it from like, now it's going to be 80% of my day. It's like, mm -hmm. no, you can add things little by little to your plate. Mm -hmm. If it's too much, you just take those things off. So that's something that I had to really work on. But yeah. And well, also what I told myself is you will still forever be Olympic champion, Don Harper Nelson. It just may not be what they start with. Cause now your mom, like that's now that's kind of going to be like the first thing that mm -hmm. you do. And, um, I've had to take time to, um, put time into my other desires. That's something that was new to me. You know, mm -hmm. you were asking like, what do you, how do you kind of juggle? Like you're not that person anymore. I've had to take a step back and say, who all am I? And I've realized I've been blessed with other gifts that I did not nourish. I did not feed. Um, and so now it's exciting mm -hmm. to feed those things yeah. and really step out on a limb and reach out to people that are doing it and saying, Hey, so I have an interest. Like, how did you get into it? Or how did you, cause I'm the person that people reach out to and ask the questions. Mm -hmm. And now mm -hmm. I'm like, so you're on TV, huh? What's that like? Mm -hmm. Or what's it like having the mic in your face? So that's what I've, that's pretty much. So with that, a few questions come from that. One, we we talked we talked at the beginning about like women supporting other women and how things are changing, but there's still in many aspects that scarcity mindset of like, particularly with something like that where it's like presenting or being on the TV. There's only so many spots, and so how do you navigate mm -hmm. that with like, you know, like not coming across as like, I'm out for your job. Just right. watch me. I'm going to come right. get it. Right. Like, you know, like how do you navigate that? Well, I cannot remember the two women. Um, oh, I think one is Jamili Hill. I'll say her name wrong. It might be Jamil Hill. But um, the other lady that she was, they were both, I think, um, on the network with, and she was brought in and it was two young, but two young women, mm -hmm. right? Her and the other lady. And she said, basically in, in each room, 
she was being told like, yo, it can only be one of you. So like, you need to be cutthroat to her. Yep. And the lady eventually, the lady was being told the same thing. She said, eventually you both realized like, okay, I'm going to just talk to her. Like, I don't know if this is true or not. Like I need to talk to her. And she said that they did. And they both were like, girl, no, I have nothing against you. Yeah. Like, I hope we <laughs> both succeed. And so yeah. they were saying, let's pour into each other, yes. you know, like any ways that I can help you, you know, and, and not, they didn't say this, but I'm just thinking this now. Sometimes it's like, well, okay, well then at this time, the best man wins. Like if there can, it sucks that there's only going to be one of us. But if it happens to be you, I don't think that you did anything to undermine me. And if you did, you got to deal with that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so for me, it's just going to be a space of, I enjoy this. And if I'm given the opportunity to step into it, I'm going to step into it, but I'm going to do it as an honorable person, respectful. Um, I'm going to try to do the best at my job. And when I tell you I can reach out and help another woman, I am doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then trying to educate on the things that I've learned. So that would be my approach to walking into you yeah. know, any space of like, I don't think it needs to be one of us. Like, and then it's like, I hope I'm not the only woman. Like yeah. I want to see another, yeah, just yeah, even yeah. give her that look like, Hey girl, we in here. Yeah. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, the, and you definitely, with what you were saying earlier and just the, like you have that abundance mindset and if women are doing well in these situations, then more opportunities mm-hmm. will arise and mm-hmm. more, um, networks and platforms and other places will come up and seek out yes. women that gives you know I, I really believe that a rising tide lifts all boats mentality and it's great to hear you say that and then the other thing I'd love to know based on that was um, you said about you know not thinking you could do more than one thing and in the past I would say the era that you were at your peak mm-hmm. is was very much like serious got to yep. take it serious like there's any part of you wonder like how it would have changed things had you Maybe I don't want to say have more balance. Do you feel mm-hmm. like you needed that, or do you think you could have done just as well, or maybe even maybe even better if you'd had some space to let in other things? You know what? I think at that time, how I am, I mean, it's, but it's so hard to say because it's like, is it how I am because of the things yeah, that I, you yeah, know what yeah. I mean? But right, the, just if my initial answer was going to be. I almost feel like with how I am, I think I needed to do one thing at a time when Mm -hmm. I was younger. Um, I think that that allowed me to give my best performance Mm -hmm. on the track. I think that it allowed me to be the, um, as I say, dog that I was on the Mm -hmm. track um, because I knew that I poured so much in it too. I was ready to claw. Like, I mean, in my lane, I'm like, listen. These 100 meters are mine. I don't know whose else is. I'm sorry that you're here. I don't know the sacrifices that you made. In these 12 seconds, they mean nothing to me, Mm -hmm, you know, and mm -hmm. I think that it equipped me with all of that in those 12 seconds. Yeah. Um, But the reason why I also think that it was okay the way I did things is I still was able to establish amazing relationships, you know, along the way. Um, People say that I was someone of integrity. The women that I've met, the men that I've met, they're like, you were a good person. You know, so it's like, I wasn't just so tunneled that I'm like, don't yeah. talk to me. I don't want to know friends. When <laughs> yeah. I get done with the circuit, I will look up and then when I'm 30 and then say, oh, what's your name? No, you know, I've had good. And then I actually had a lot of ladies that I raced throughout my career that would come to my room after the race and sounds so bad. Like I would win the race and they would come to my race to want to talk to me about like, it was such a rough race. Can I talk to you about what happened? And I would be like, Oh, you want to talk to me? Because I really, I would let them know, yeah. especially the young ones. Like I'm here to talk, like, mm-hmm, let's talk. Mm-hmm. And then when they would, I'd be like, Oh, you want to talk about it? And they're like, yeah, I lost. And I'm like, yeah, I won. Like it was weird. <laughs> that is a strange situation. Yes, to be in. Yeah. But I was like, I'm doing something right where I'm leaving the door open. I'm not cocky about the win. I'm yep, not cocky yep, about. Yep. So yeah, that made that will make me feel really good of like, okay, oh, good, good. I'm being a good person. Yeah. You know, a good, a good winner, a good loser, you know. So, yeah. I, I love that though. And I bet that meant so much to those women, especially like being able to like see the example of what they, you know, what the future could look mm-hmm, like. Mm-hmm. Um, but being able to process those um, moments. But yeah, I bet that would be a really weird situation to be like, <laughs> Um, well, you're kind of like struggle, but I actually was just fine. So, <laughs> right, right. Um, yeah, no, I appreciate all of that that you've shared and all that we've been talking about. So then let's move, look, look forward. Mm-hmm. Um, what does running wise, let's start with that. What does the future hold there as far as you can say? Right, right. As far, see, ooh, as, as, far, far as, as you say, can ooh. see or say. Yeah. Um, so mm-hmm. yeah, I, once again, like I said, running will forever be a part of my life. Um, you know, discussions of running professionally, but then there's that juggle of, I know I want more kids mm-hmm. and, and I know that I can be 40 and having kids, but my own desires, I'm like, oh, I did not want to be 40 something having kids. Like I just, it's so funny how 
I just think about how active I want to be, you know, in their lives. And then even when they're like graduating from college and all this, you just think about all of that. Um, but it's something how I love running. Like I love the idea of seeing how good I can get like at this practice. Like well, did something new click today or mm -hmm. did I feel that old thing? I'm like, Oh, that was not, that's what I, that's what I would feel when I was rolling. And, um, and for me it, in particular, it's with the hurdles. Like I love, and the sad part about that is, is I'm like, I know I won't be able to hurdle for forever. Like I know I can forever yeah. be a runner. Like I'm yeah. going to be 80 yeah. and you're going to be like, is that, yep, that's me on the side of the road, like getting it in, <laughs> but I won't be able to always hurdle. Mm -hmm. So that's something that I actually think about and like, boo, it makes me a little sad, but right now your girl can still hurdle. So, um, <laughs> so running wise, I mean, I know I, I, even if I stop today, uh, competing, um, I know that I will go to competitions. Like I'm someone that I love track and field. Like mm -hmm. I love mm -hmm. the sport of track and field. Mm -hmm. And it's been funny because over the years, you'll have some people that didn't have good experiences and they're like, oh, I just, I don't, I, I, I'll never, when I'm done running, I'm done. And always in my head, I'm like, I love it. Like mm -hmm. I'm going to be, I do. I just love to see, you know, just on that day, the guts and glory that's been poured out, you know, um, so yeah, I'm going to be involved in track and field. For yeah, sure. I I love hearing that. And you uh, are you able to, you know, you said about loving the challenge of or, or like feeling something click on a day of mm -hmm. what it used to feel mm -hmm. like. How do you do that without it being like constant comparison of like um, oh you know that thought of like oh maybe I could uh -huh. you know yeah I I haven't learned that yet. I have no <laughs> idea. Like I don't know because I. The, I think the only thing that is going to help, and it sounds so bad, is uh, once I get pregnant and have my next kid, I'm, I know I'm done. Like, I know I'm not going to have another child and then come back. So that's yeah. going to be those practices will be the ones like, oh, that just felt good. But eh. but until mm -hmm. then, mm -hmm. I might be that person that's like, I think I could win a race or two. Yeah, <laughs> I know tough. it's going to be there. Yeah. Like, I don't know. How do you. So for you, how do you do that? Yeah. When you just. Yeah. Just starting to think about that bit. I think I actually feel quite at peace with it. I I will say that um, when Steve and I were talking a few days ago about what this next six months looks mm -hmm. like running wise, I one thing I knew was I do not want to do a marathon. That's mm -hmm. way too. Uh, uh, I mm -hmm. say that I am running Boston um, <laughs> as a guide. <laughs> oh, oh, oh yeah. that's cool. Yeah, no, I like to do that. I'm, I'm actually doing that twice this spring. Nice. Um, I like to run as a guide. So this is like four and a half hours ish. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll be running. Okay. But I knew, so I am doing marathon. Let me add that caveat. But I, I knew the one thing I didn't want to do was train for a marathon mm. because that is still too close to that sucking in that comparison trap of like, uh, you know, oh, what did I used to run this yeah. in? Like, oh, am I close to that? Um, I feel like I haven't got it there. But everything else, I feel actually for me right now, where I'm able to um, run something and be like, damn that I, I, I don't, that feels like a different person that mm. used to run those mm -hmm. times and mm -hmm. used to be able to do those things, but more of like a real genuine respect for that rather than a like, Oh, what is wrong with me now? Like, why can't I do this anymore? But I think part of it for me is that I've been able to let go of, I know I'm not willing to put in mm -hmm. 90 miles a week worth of running <laughs> or like two to three hours a day mm -hmm. worth of mm -hmm. stuff. Like I'm just not willing to do it. I, <laughs> I, I want to say I barely strength train, but I've unfortunately fallen back into that. I do not strength train again, <laughs> even though I keep telling myself, I know how important it is, but I just, for me, I just can't seem to prioritize it. Mm -hmm. And so that's where I know deep down that that just can't be the focus. Um, but yeah, the marathon, I still haven't quite managed mm -hmm. to let go of that. But okay. I am going to be doing a lot of local races around okay. here. And just, I think that's a good way, like connecting into the running community. Um, that's a good way for me to like, kind of just keep being involved and reminded of it without sucking in that part right. of will me. You, that... Will you enter these races? You see how I'm turning the tables and I'm asking you <laughs> questions. No, but will you, when you do the local races, do you think you'll like take that competitive, like, I want to win this? Or are you going to be like, I just want to go out and see how I can do? I guess we'll see. Like I, um, I actually went jump in a, I mean, as of us recording this, I'm supposed to be jumping <laughs> in a, um, three mile race tomorrow, which is supposed oh. to snow tonight, isn't it? Oh. So oh, we'll yeah. see if that goes we'll ahead. Just get like five inches. So that's going to be interesting. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know if they'll have it or not, but I think I'd still definitely have the mentality of, I want to win. Mm -hmm. But I also recognize that St. Louis is 
while not a runner city, mm -hmm. I could easily not win any any race I do. There could easily be people that come around. But um, so I feel like St. Louis for me is quite like a good level. Okay. Like I could easily mm -hmm. get to the point where I could win everything. Mm -hmm. But I also um, will like it, it's good enough to where I could be like, well, you know, mm -hmm. good. Well yeah. done to her. Okay. Um, so yeah, we'll. Work. I don't know. We'll see. Um, okay. So that's. I want to. I want to hear more about the rest, though. Yes. Uh, yes other yes, things. Yes. What else? Yes. What else is, okay. are you looking forward to this year? Um, I'm looking forward to. I've had some discussions with people about being in front of a camera, mm -hmm. and so. Um, I'm excited because that means I will interact more with my community. I'll get to continue to meet more people, um, get to sharpen a new craft. Mm -hmm. um, and then I have definitely connected with Stephanie, um, Stephanie Bruce. I mean, she's just an awesome individual. Mm -hmm. um, we, it's How we met was on, um, I think it was like a Zoom call. And it might have been a podcast or something I think we were doing. And it was a couple of us on there. And she made this story about, she was telling the story about when she was, breastfeeding like her son and her husband says and it's the voice that she gave she said her husband was saying about like it's time to breastfeed him and she's like i'm busy like she said she turned and transformed to this different person and she said the way i laughed she's like we're gonna be friends and when she told that story i was like we're gonna be friends because it just was like she was being so real and raw yeah. about like oh, it was yeah, a hard is. time and she looked mm -hmm. at her husband like are you serious yeah. And um, and so that was really cool. So I've met her and she's um, has this grit and growth retreats yes. that she does. And, you know, you hear about and you know how powerful it is to have conversations with people, but to bring around like minded women that at the time, I think it was nine. I think she brought in like nine women. And so it was a total of nine, 10, 11, 12, 12 of us and all being in this one space mm -hmm. and opening up. And just being real and raw. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's going to be, it's, it's going to be some emotions. Okay. It's mm -hmm. going to be some, like, I feel that same way. And like, oh my God, like I didn't know, or I thought other women did, but I never really talked about it. Yeah. So I kept it to myself. And then at the end, it was some tears of like, man, like that's, it's helpful to know I'm not alone. And tears of like, mm, I'm recognizing some stuff and like, I need to make a couple of changes there, you know? And so it was really nice to, just connect with women that you don't know. And now all of a sudden you're like, I think we got some lifelong friendships here yeah. and to help hold each other accountable. Um, and then to see meet women that are just, they love to run. Yeah. Like I was on break and so I wasn't training or doing anything. And they're like, Oh, we're going to get up and go for a run this morning. Are you, I was like, get away from my door. <laughs> like I'm not going for a run. And they were so excited to run. I was like, no, 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 no. Get away from me. I don't like in this sense, we are not connected, you know? So that was really fun for them to, they're like, wow, you're, I was like, no, I'm serious. And they were like, oh, that's nice. Like, you have to prioritize your own health. And right now my health is not running. So doing that. And so we actually, um, are, um, they're putting on Steph and, um, her husband and the group are putting on a grit and growth, the gathering retreat. Mm -hmm. Um, it's May 6th through the 8th and it's in Phoenix. And so it's really cool. You can register, uh, online at grit and growth retreat.com. Amazing. Um, I know. So I'm really excited because I'll be there. We're going to have yoga instructor Tiana. Um, we're going to be doing some um, kind of conference meetings where I will be speaking about motherhood juggling, you know, like just being best mom you could be. But in that juggling it all, yeah. like best mom you could be, but it's like, what is it sometimes? What does it look like? Yeah. Like you, you hear about it and you're like, yeah, I have a couple of, you know, let's talk about, let's go through the steps and just the mindsets, you know, that we have, what yes. we need to um, bring on board and what we need to let go for, for the sure. most part. For sure. um, and then it's just, it's just, it's going to be awesome. We're going to go for runs. I'm probably not going to go for a run, but I did. <laughs> You're going to happen to time right, your right, time right, exactly. I'm sorry. But I again. did tell Steph, I was like, <laughs> I want to do a run with her where I will feel the pace that she holds for the marathon. Like I want to do it for, I, I just want to like, feel like it. Like one of those ch things they have at the race expos where right, it's like, see right. how long you can run. Exactly. Exact, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Like a treadmill space. that they yeah. have. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, I don't know. I haven't decided the distance Ooh, yet. I like that. But I do. I just want to feel like, cause I'm like, I mean, I can hold whatever pace like she we talked about it i said if you went all out in a hundred like what's the fastest you could go and did she say i think she said like 15 seconds and i was like no 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 like if you have to go all out and she's like you're not listening to me it's <laughs> gonna be 15 seconds and i was like 
that's it. Like it was, yeah, it was yeah, funny yeah. because she's like, yeah, but she's like, but I can hold that for, and she was mm-hmm. saying like miles. And I'm like, see, that's the difference. Yep. I'm not, I'm not holding that for miles. So yeah, I mean, there's just a lot of things that I feel like it's just going on in my head that um, I actually want to, and you're going to have to help me with this. Mm. I really want to start like a mommy's group around here where we get together, even if it's just two times um, out of the week. I mean, I'm sorry, two times out of the month, because I know our time is valuable and it's difficult to get away. But where we work out together, we discuss, mm. we talk about things, and it doesn't have to be a long, drawn out discussion, because I know the main goal is to get together and be active. Yeah, yeah. So it's just to get moving. And it's like, you can bring your babies if you want. Well, you can leave your babies at home. Sometimes you're like, I don't want to hear my baby cry. <laughs> yeah. So I really just want to iron that out, you know, more about like what I want that to yeah. look like and, and stuff like that. And so uh, my husband gave me a good idea of, he's like, how about you bring on, because, you know, he's a high school um, yeah. teacher. And I know some kids that I work with all the time and they're really, he's like, how about you bring on like two of them? To in the, in the area that you're like, have them watch the kids just off on the side, oh, so it's yeah. not like they're not out of their mother's side, mm. not all that, but just like you can have your child over it's here if day. you want, yeah. you know, because it's like if you want, or, or I do want to work out and I have to bring my baby, yeah. but I don't want to, I can't work it's out hard, with my baby mentally, yeah, you're yeah. not there, yeah. So it's like you have that that space where you mm. can come and so yeah, just trying to offer different options and figure out. So you got to help me brainstorm. Okay, okay, that, I will. I yeah, really I, that sounds that. great. Yeah, no, I love that, and um, and I think that's a good example of where like we can all, you know, everyone's feeling a bit isolated right now, especially yeah. going in through what we are right now. Another, you know, who knows what's happening, <laughs> right. but um to do things locally within what mm-hmm, your control mm-hmm, is. Mm-hmm. Every single person listening has the opportunity to do that. You might look at Stephanie Bruce and think wow, that's amazing. Either I can't go out to Arizona for this retreat um, or um, I just, I don't have eight, well, however many th- thousand followers she has um, to be able to bring something mm-hmm. like that together, but you could do something locally in your area. Yes. So um, I love that you're highlighting that because I think that's really important. Yeah. Um, Dawn, anything else you want to like, based on what we've talked about today that you want to let remind the listeners of? Oh my goodness. Being put on the spot. Mm. Um, just that whatever your dreams are, whatever your goals are, they're valuable. Mm-hmm. They're worth it. Mm-hmm. Um, most importantly, you're worth it. Mm-hmm. Whoever is listening, who's ever eardrum, this is entering to right now. Yes. <laughs> no, seriously. It's just like you are worth five minutes, a 10 minutes, a, just a two minute. You know what I mean? Literally just to stop in your space where you are and just take deep breaths. I mean, mm-hmm. it's just no matter how much money and time you have, is nothing like just health and your mental health. So just taking mm, time for that. <laughs> I love you so much. You are amazing. <laughs> thank, you. Um, thank you so much. Uh, the listeners are going to uh, just uh, lap this up and uh, me too. Um, I just adore you and I'm so appreciative of you. So thank you so much for today and uh, just the bright light you are in this world. Oh, thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Hi friends, just a quick message to say a big thank you to the Running For Real team. While I may be the face of Running For Real and the voice behind the podcast, there are a group of people who are working tirelessly to provide everything that runners could need within our community to make our community stronger, better and evolve and grow and learn from one another. We are working really hard to make Running For Real the place we believe it can be within our community. I just want to take a moment to thank everyone on our team. That is Victoria, Stacy, Sandy, Sally, Maria, Kelsey, Kat, Jeremy, and Erica. I appreciate each and every one of you and the hard work that you put in. Now let's get back to the show. Oh, if you didn't already love Dawn or know who Dawn was after this episode, you are of course going to want to follow it along and you can go find her all across social media, but primarily she loves to hang out on Instagram and you should definitely go watch her Instagram. Um, especially as she mentioned there, there's, there's, um, certain things that she does during championships and things like that, where she just brings so much personality and enjoyment to watching. Um, and, uh, we talked about the Olympics there where she was commentating on her own channel and it was just so popular and loved. Um, Dawn Harper Nelson, you can find her at D hop 100 M H. So that's D H A R P 100 M H. So that's Dawn Harp hundred meter hurdles. Just for remembering D H A R P 100 M H. 
go find her there. It is adorable to see Harper, Alonzo and her and just what they're able to do. They also do have a separate account. Um, I think it's the real Nelsons, but uh, start with her main account. It is beautiful. It is just heartwarming and good. So go find her there. You can also find her at Twitter with the same uh, handle. And uh, thank you so much again to our sponsors for sp- supporting us in this episode. To Athletic Greens, you can get a one-year free supply of vitamin D3 and also five free travel packs when you go to athleticgreens.com forward slash Tina. You can also get 20% off your order at UCAN by going to ucan.co and using code Tina UCAN. And you can also make sure that 5% of your Order goes to Runners for Public Lands when you purchase something at Tracksmith by using code TINA15. I appreciate everything you are doing there with Tracksmith to support um, Runners for Public Lands and the fantastic work they are doing. Thank you so much, my friends. I will see you on Monday for a Together Run and next week for a regular episode. 